Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to 1000 Live. Now, in the two previous videos, I had some problems with my recording software, which I have resolved with this recording session. So I apologize for not being able to hear me in the last few videos. Anyway, uh, well, let's just get back into the story. Alrighty. We leave the shop with our sandwiches in hand. We'll walk in and ask Eva if we can stop and sit somewhere together. I exhaustedly plop onto a nearby bench, closing my eyes and relishing in the sweet respite. Eva looks annoyed and puffs out her cheeks while I look at her. When I look at her, she's not angry but somehow serious. This is what I meant. By the difference between lies and deceit ending. You can lie all you want, but deceit always depends on how much the other person trusts you. There's no deceit without a lie, but there are lies without deceit. In this situation, you're both the liar and the deceived, you know what I mean? Yeah, you're still craving a bite of my sandwich. Too bad, girl, you've already missed your chance. I already told you that I don't want it. That has nothing to do with it. How can I make you understand? Eva folds her arms and racks her brain. Alright. Think of a schizophrenic trying to describe reality. To do that, he'd first have to lie to himself about what he's seen, but he wouldn't be able to wouldn't be able to deceive himself about what his own reality is presenting. There's no use for him to distinguish between reality and delusion if what he feels is totally different, right? I mean... The tone our conversations usually have is gone. It starts feeling more and more like a lecture and it pisses me off because we only, we only have 20 minutes off for our breaks. And we should be spending forgetting about class. Did you come up with all that crap on your own, or did you steal it from a book? It was me, I guess. It just came to me. Did it sound weird? In short, stop interrupting me. Your behavior is nothing more than a clear-cut example of internal conflict. There's something you like and feel attracted to, but the closer you get to it, the more negative points about it come to mind, so you want to run away or avoid it somehow. My point is that we don't know what's going to happen until it actually happens. That's why I think you should be brave and get on with it. Between the email and Mysterious Girl X, I'm positive that you want to know more about everything. Instead, you lie to yourself, believing that the situation is just too stupid. The real question is, can you deceive yourself? If you can't, then you won't deceive me either. You won't convince me anyway. I look at Ziva in disbelief as she continues proudly bragging about her own words. I come to a conclusion. I was right when I first said that you were lying. You caught me. <laughs> in any case, lies are too demonized, in my opinion. Um. Ziva grins after processing what I just said and responds. In response, I begin sweating, realizing that I probably just opened Pandora's box. Thankfully, I'm saved by the bell as I notice a certain someone approaching us. Check it out! Capamiro, Ziva, here you are. I was speaking with some girls from the other side when... Who's this guy? Huh? Me? What do you mean? It's almost like... I know you from somewhere or something. It must have been the work of a witch. I think she chanted a spell, something like, Forget about Alcee. But who's Alcee? Stop twisting my words, Aaron. You know that wasn't what I meant. Whatever, Alcee, what were you saying before? Better be worthwhile. I lost you guys a while ago, and I have no idea what you're talking about. 
Okay, back to what I was trying to say. I forgot. I can't tell if you're only smart when you want to be, or if your brain just doesn't have the capacity for it 24 7. That's exactly why I believed you when you said you're Alice's friend because of his money. You wouldn't be. If you go to the other side again, then tell them to bring over your alter ego for a bit. It'd be convenient to have a competent Aussie for once. <laughs> Unfortunately, I suspect that this is the only Aussie. What do you expect to get from interrupting me? The other side is our nickname for Anna Institute. It's down the street and directly opposite our school. It was even built on the same blueprint as our school. They probably reused the blueprint to save money, so they're completely the same. Mirrored buildings placed on opposite sides. It's pretty close to here, a little more than 10 minutes walking. A lot of people wonder why they didn't just make a larger, one larger school instead of two smaller ones. The funny thing about it is that since the buildings look identical, we joke about alternate versions of ourselves going to school there. Like clones or doppelgangers. At the other side, students who have had who have bad grades here are honor students. If someone's fat, then their clone is skinny, stuff like that. It's an old joke now, but I still find it pretty funny. Oh yeah, I remember what I was gonna say. Do you remember that weird email Kier got? Even I nod simultaneously. I'll see them pulled out of the side of the phone, and after playing around with it, shows us its screen. Is that another one? When you mentioned the email, I was already expecting this, and looking at the screen really confirms my fear. It's another we weird email addressed to me. From Heritage. Taking in. Subject, not for everybody. Can a lie become reality? If you want to know the truth, go find it. This afternoon at the local sports center. Join it. Good luck choosing your first action. Sure. Choosing your first action. Do we actually get to choose actions in this game? There's a song about an action for the last area. Oh no. I'm confused. Anyway, moving on. I stand there wide eyed and in disbelief. Alsi puts away his cell phone and scratches his head in confusion. You remember how I wanted to use my phone to check your email the other day? I forgot to log out of your account and my phone has been logged into it since. To my surprise, earlier today I opened an alert for a new email and it turns out it was actually for you. And well, that's what I read. Again, what did I do to deserve this? Computer is what I mean. Uh, what do you mean? This is perfect. This time I can go with you. I want to know what happens. Me too. It's hysterical enough as a story. Imagine us getting to watch it live. What? No way, I'm not stupid enough to repeat the same mistake. Once bitten, twice shy. Aren't you curious? After what happened yesterday, we absolutely have to uncover the truth. You said that what and you said what happened yesterday was probably just a misunderstanding anyways. Whoever sent it to you is giving you a second chance. That's right. What happened to your depressing love story, eh? Are you going to abandon it now? That isn't the problem. What am I supposed to do? I don't even know what they mean by join it. Join what? 
I'm excited to go there. Isn't there any way to convince you otherwise? Ah, computer chill. Bugger. Things are lagging. Lagging is bad. Uh, I'm so excited to go there. Isn't there any way to convince you otherwise? Maybe there are other. I don't know if I do. Come on, Elsie, help me, even if it's with one of those crazy schemes of yours. Crazy schemes. I see. There's no other way. I'm sorry about your voices. Elsie clicks his tongue in disapproval and sharply gazes at me. I guess we'll have to set it this way. With a bet. <laughs> we'll settle this with a bet. Ah. A bet? Uh oh. It said that every human being chronically suffers from at least one sin. I don't think I'm usually greedy, but that naturally inherent part of me always wakes up with one worry. Bet. The thrill of gambling. The risk. The possibility of getting caught cheating and getting punished. Fortune is the vessel that brings men glory and excitement. A trophy of what has come to pass. I am prideful enough to always fulfill my promises and stick to my bets, no matter the cost or price. Everything I have in my wallet right now, wagered against you going to the sports center with us. I motion for Elsie to show me what's in his wallet first. Inside, there's a reasonable, sizable prize well worth the challenge. Alright, Elsie, I accept. However, following the proper rules for this kind of bet, I get to be the one who decides which game we'll play. Sure, I'm going to win anyways. There's only one way to put to rest our ongoing rivalry. A game where you, the lowly commoner, dies in a glorious battle against the eternal, magnificent hero king. We'll end this with... Me? <laughs> a sled desk race. Sled desk? No way! Oh, Alright, flood this. Let's do it! Can I really explain what a sled desk race is? This is why I've been training day and night. For an opportunity like this, you'll regret it when I make you step down from your throne. Is anyone going to answer me? My fear is akin to what a human would feel in the face of being stepped on by an ant. Stepped on by an ant? How's that scary? Unless, of course, you're afraid of ants, which is totally okay. Uh, since I choose the game, do you want to establish any extra rules? Hey, I'm still here. What's the sled desk? Next break. One on one. Race to the death. To the death. Don't make me laugh. No more bets. The money's on the table and you can't drop out now. You know just how invincible I am when it comes to sled this. I don't even know what that is, honestly. <laughs> the same goes for you. You might be surprised this time. We make our way back to our classrooms, bickering so offensively that sparks are flying at each other. Ooh. Is anyone going to tell me what a sled desk is? In the end, the one who has forgotten is me. Jeez. Mm. 
Um, stuff in the research. Some swag. Um, after returning from our break and finishing a class I can't even remember the lesson of, we begin preparing for our sled desk race. Ziva, a self-proclaimed impartial judge, stands next to me while I tune up my sled desk. You want to believe that your sled desk is a little more original than desks being used as sleds. Seriously, it's a freaking race on top of this. What else can you ever go up or what? You don't get it, do you? Sled desk represents the inner flame that burns inside every man. No. I'm busy. Two. Damn it, man. No, it was it. A tool used to awaken our inner peace. I can't understand it because you lack testosterone. No, don't say that, man. Those can be vicious when they want to. <laughs> More like patience. So are you really going to race in the hallway? It's kind of narrow for that. Besides, do you really think your desk will slide like sleds? Even if we get rid of the rubber stuff on the legs, I don't think they'll... It's obviously how new you are here. You're lucky just to... S You're just lucky to see a live sled desk race today. I don't know why we haven't done any this year before today. You see, the hallway is positioned at a downward angle. Although it can be difficult to notice, when we discovered that we realized that here is perfect for racing on top of pretty much anything. We agreed that desks were our best option for racing. That was how sled desk races were born. An important milestone for future generations. I put tacks. Look for the rubber on the legs of my desk so I can slide even farther, too. I gently kick one of the desks to show Ziva how far I can go. Thanks to the tech modification, it slides across the floor and reaches the classroom door effortlessly. The winner is the one whose desk goes the farthest distance in only one push. I see. I'm really not convinced, though. These races have to end pretty quickly. The desk don't slide for more than 10 seconds. And that's exactly how long a race should take. It isn't like our breaks are that long either. Then what's the fun part? <laughs> you still don't get it? You'll see if you watch. The sled desk can awaken a man's inner strength which can warp even time and space. Pay attention. Whatever. Are you ready to lose? Lose? Is that another one of your foreign expressions? I don't know what it means. I fear I'll have to teach you then. Come find me at all. Again, if I'm saying that wrong, I'm sorry. Ugh. Desk versus desk in the narrow hallway. There's barely enough space for us to stand around. The most important part of each sled desk race is the beginning. The contestant with the best initial push will probably be the winner. There are also other obstacles in the way, making it pretty difficult to overtake your fellow racer once he has passed you. But you never know in a race to the death. There are no set rules. Anything goes. The other contestant can try to mess up his opponent at any moment by any means. That's why sled desk races are taken so seriously. You could get pretty hurt so only the bravest of students can compete. Alfie and I are the only ones who participate in these races now that I think about it. I wonder why. Wonder why. As judge, I'll give the starting signal and act as commentator. Not that I think there's going to be much to say, I mean... Are you guys ready to go? 
start whenever. The only things you need to ready are your lips, me amor. Since I'll take a kiss from you as my prize when I win. I don't know if you can hear that. We're starting in three, two, one. Go! Ah! <laughs> the race begins with a strong first push from both competitors. Their timing was in sync, both of them clearly taking into account how important the beginning of the race is. It's a perfect start. What's this? Elsie's in the lead. <laughs> how does it feel to be eating my dust back there for once? Lag, no lag. Im impossible. How can you possibly be faster than me? I was sure that. You were sure that I wasn't using tax, right? <sighs> tax. After every race, I'd wonder how Kira was so fast. Feet after defeat, my desk would always stop short where yours always seemed to fly past mine. I studied mechanics and engineering to figure out what could have happened. And then I had an epiphany. You were using tax to reduce the friction. With a tack covering each leg, your desk wasn't that, was that much faster than mine. When I found out, I decided against telling you so that next time I'd catch you off guard and I could use it to my advantage. Who's the smart one now? You've done all these races against him without ever knowing her. I noticed as soon as I saw his desk. Why do you think I accepted this bet? I'm not the champion because I'm good. It's because he's stupid. <laughs> ah, don't spoil my glorious moment. In any case, it still doesn't make sense. We started at the same time with the same push. So how'd Elsie get in the lead? What's going on? No, please behave. When the distance between the two of us widened, I noticed a shimmering trail. Elsie's desk was leaving behind a quick trail of liquid of some sort. Don't know if those are working right now. That's... Oil. Alsi's desk cells are covered in oil. That's why his desk is faster. I wasn't satisfied with just being being on even ground. I looked for more methods to improve my speed. And this is the result of my hard work. Maybe. Maybe Alsi isn't as dumb as he seems after all. <laughs> after all. Also drew some flames on the desk to improve its acceleration. In the movies, flying in cars are always faster, so it has to be legit. <laughs> oh, but it's so sad. I take it back. When Alsie is distracted, I begin my all-out attack. I toss everything out of my pencil case. Pens, pencils, scissors, a pencil sharpener, and a race of the loose of the pig. I'm using some of those fake chocolate coins so ancient that their currency stopped existing more than a century ago. They fly through the air towards Elsie's unsuspecting sled desk. If I'm lucky and something hits, his desk might slide backwards, awarding me victory. But it's not that simple. No way! Here, what are you doing? Partially cloudy with an 82% chance of relative humidity and low pressure winds. And then 
over 60% chance of rain during the day, so I brought an umbrella. Elsie used his umbrella to defend against the incoming attack. Now Endian has nothing left to throw. Slimer stands still for me. Not because of any incoming premonition of my defeat, but the amazing fact that Elsie can memorize daily meteorological data so precisely. But for the pain I feel after losing a friend. He who once walked the same path as I is now standing at the crossroads. Facing another direction. He's unreachable, and even though I thought he was stupid, he's silently leaving me behind. Probably because he's too good for me. My dearest. Pig eraser. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I watch as it bounces off the umbrella, jumps past the hallway and into the abyss. Forever lost to me. To tell the truth, I had found it on the floor a couple days ago, so really I had only probably just stolen it from some unlucky fool. A time ago, it was so short I didn't even remember that I had it in my pencil case until now. Still, it was the most powerful and touching relationship I've ever had with an eraser. Farewell, my old friend. Bandera! Indians gaining ground. How is it possible? Jeez. He's using his opponent's oil treasure to lose friction and speed up. Dang. Between the oil and Elsie's umbrella temporarily slowing him down, Indian is about to catch up. If he tackles him, he might. Not so fast. I still have one more trick up my sleeve. Elsie took something out of his umbrella. He has... He has a ruler! But it's not just any ruler. It's a meter stick. Where did he get that from? You know what I'm going to do now, right? Checkmate, compañero. Shit. Elsie flung the meter stick and ended in the path. It's like a landmine. It's impossible for you to avoid ending. At this speed, you can only, it can only end in catastrophe. Jump ending. Save yourself. It isn't worth it. I can't. I can't give up now. Searching my computer. I promise that I'd never forget. I can't let... I can't let my pencil sharpen a sacrifice be in vain. No, wait. There's an eraser. Right, an eraser. I'm not really sure whether it's an eraser or a sharpener or whatever it was that I cared about. My desk collides with the ruler. Back legs of my desk fly upwards, flipped by the inertia. An instant later, the front legs follow suit. I'm about to fall. Nevertheless, what the? sound of an angel. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna leave this video here. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye!